Um, so I'll be talking about uh, universal stack analysis systems today. Um, I'll mostly be focusing on the problems uh, that the field is currently facing. Um, but first let's um, reintroduce the image stereography um, because, well, this is um, vital to understanding the stack analysis. So the, the problem in image stereography is that we want to uh, send a message to someone else through some public channel um, without any third party, some adversary uh, that is monitoring this channel uh, knowing that you're sending this message. And uh, the primary way that we're going to be focusing on is uh, by embedding some uh, message that you want to send um, within, um, within an image so that the adversary only sees the image and thinks that, uh, that no message beside that has been sent. So um, in that way you can hide your, uh, you know, what you're sending. Um, it's, it's really useful to do this with images because then um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's quite easy to hide your information in the images. Images are large, images have some least significant bits which really aren't that um, needed for the visual effects sometimes. And you can just change some of those and without all too much um, change for the, the visual effect for a human, you can uh, still embed your message. And the general model for this, um, like it, it already sounds really similar to cryptography. So you have a similar model where you have some secret message you want to send um, some key exchange process, which we won't be going into today, and um, then sending it when embedded in the cover to uh, the other person through the open channel, who can then extract the message with the same key. Now, the second analysis problem in general um, is how we can identify when this has happened. So we, we obtain some kind of image and we want to know, okay, um, is this a stego image? Has there been something embedded inside of this image? Um, so these two fields are in sort of arms ways with each other and um, we're going to be focusing on the stack analysis and the stack analysis is done in uh, two primary ways which is um, to either do it for some specific steganography method to, to target one or to do the universal case. Um, we're going to be talking about the universal case in general uh, but first let's see what the specific case is to, to know why you want to do this. So in the targeted case we expect that we know um, what algorithm is being used by the steganographer. And if we know that, then we can exploit that specific method. So um, a great example for this is one of the, basically the oldest method for steganography is just replacing least significant bits with the message you try to send. But in that case, if the, the message we're trying to send is, um, uh, has the same chance for a one or a zero, which is generally the case if you are also doing crypto crypt uh, cryptography for that, um, then any pair of values uh, in the image of the, these pixels that only differ in their least significant bits, they will have about the same occurrence because, well, we're replacing all of them with a random uh, with random bits, and that's really easy to um, notice because, well, if you see here, you really see the difference between the the embedded version and the non-embedded version, and the problem here is this works great, but then your attacker, the, the, the steganographer says, okay, well, I'm going to renormalize my features. I can just use the, the pixels I'm not changing to, to get the original uh, distribution back. And now we can't do anything. So what we really want is universal stack analysis where without any knowledge about the, the algorithm used, we can still detect it. Um, so this requires that we find some difference, some general difference between um, all cover images, all non-embedded images, and all these stego images generated by whatever algorithm. So that's quite a large problem. However, the advantage is that we don't, uh, we, we aren't that susceptible to someone um, creating a new method, which we aren't able to detect with our old system. And it's also possible that we might be able to um, detect a new system which wasn't even known before. So these are great advantages. So let's see how we might get there. Um, yeah, so the, the general model for the universal stack analysis is this uh, single shot formulation, which is basically the, 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 the formulation you know from just regular image classification where you get one image and you need to classify it, and in this case to either be in a cover or a stego image. Um, so we, we really get the, the normal uh, image classification systems, and the main difference here is in the feature extraction stage. Because in this feature extraction, um, we see a really, really strange thing occurring. 
Um, if you model this, uh, this technography process, the, the main way of modeling this is to see it as uh, taking some cover image and adding some um, stego noise, which just, we can treat it effectively as noise to obtain our stego image. And in this case, if we want to identify whether this has happened, then we want to find features that are able to generalize over the image content. So we want to be able to ignore the image content and look at the noise, which is pretty much the opposite of what you're doing normally when you're doing other kinds of image classification. So a lot of really interesting new features have been uh, developed for this uh, area. Um, I won't be going into too many in too much detail, but the, the, the main process which is used here is to uh, look at the correlations. Because even um, with these, uh, these not so significant bits, you have some correlation between the neighboring pixels. And if you use that, then um, because the, the, the noise we're adding is independent from the content most of the time, um, then this correlation will probably be reduced or in other ways changed. So um, we might be able to detect it through doing that. Um, so there's a lot of things there, but well, too much depth to go into right now. Um, now we're going to go to the the current problems in the field, because there are a lot of them. Um, yeah, let's just start right off. So, first of all, um, currently the methods that are available, um, the, 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 how good they work, depend a lot on the embedding rates. Um, obviously, if you want to embed 10 times as much data in one image, then it becomes a lot easier to detect when that has happened. Um, the problem is that if you look at what is uh, currently possible, you can see that around here 0 0.1 bits per pixel, which sounds like a really low amount because, well, we can only embed one bit for every 10 pixels we, we send. But if you look at what that really gives us, um, for example, for a thousand by thousand image, uh, thousand by thousand pixel image, then um, if we go 10 times lower than that, we can still send 1250 characters. So we can have some significant text communication, even when we go 10 times lower than this. And if we look here, we get about 20% error rate. And for any real use case, this kind of error rate would be unacceptable because, well, you need to imagine, you want to detect uh, communication by criminals or terrorists or whatever, something like that. You're, communica you're trying to, to look at all communication and see if there's been something embedded. So with 20% error rate, probably the, the real amount is so low that you're just going to be swimming in false positives and that's unacceptable. So that's one large problem for text data. Um, next is the problem of image source dependence. So um, if you're capturing some natural image through a camera, uh, that image acquisition pipeline has some um, specific characteristics based on what camera you're using. Um, for example, it introduces certain types of noise due to, uh, well, lots of stages really, doesn't really matter where it comes from, but there, there are no, uh, there's noise introduced, there's correlation introduced due to uh, interpolation steps, um, there's dependence on what kind of uh, compression tables you're using. So um, that introduces a lot of um, small differences, but we are looking at small differences here. So um, it has been found by looking at um, a set of seven different uh, camera sources and then embedding only uh, data in one of the sets of those camera sources that if you then try to classify it, you see that there's a, a big, um, a, a lot of um, a pattern in which um, sources are being misclassified. So you can see most of the sources are never misclassified as being um, the, the guilty source, but a set of sources here are really commonly identified as being the, the, the guilty ones. So apparently the, the small changes these sources have on the, the image are really significant as far as our features for stack analysis go. So this means that if we're going to try to do stack analysis, then apparently we don't only need to, uh, to be aware of all the different kinds of steganography, we also need to be aware of the different kinds of image sources. So that's a problem. Um, and last, the, the, the current formulation that's used, that single shot formulation, where you just look at one image and you decide, is this stego or not? that doesn't really fit the real use case that well. Because for real steganography, the, the steganographer knows that if he has a high embedding rate, the system will be able to see that he has embedded. Um, he is the adversary, he tries to avoid this, and he's not really limited to a single image. You can just send however many images you want. You have some limit, but it's at least not a single image. So the problem is that this current formulation doesn't scale at all 
to an attacker that can can spread across these multiple images. So there is this alternative, the batch model, where you take where you take sets of images and then um, or sets of users rather, and then each user has sets of images, and you need to decide for each user separately if he has done uh, this steganography. And um, in this case, we can abuse far smaller um, changes per image because if we see that every image has some small change in the noise or uh, in the correlations, then we see that that then that's easier to detect. If you have some consistent change, even if it's, even if it's quite small, it can be easier to detect. So we need to change over to this model while the current research is really focused on that um, original single shot formulation. And it seems right now like it's not very easy to, um, to generalize uh, one of these single shot uh, methods, where one of the, the steganalysis methods based on that, to this, this new model. Um, so the, the way forward from here is that we need to examine ways of maybe extending some of the methods available, um, at least at looking how we can uh, implement the currently found features uh, in this new model. Um, we need to check for the dependence of the current features on this uh, image source uh, problem, the, how the image source uh, affects the values of these uh, extracted features, um, because that currently has only been done for one set of features, so that, that needs to be expanded. And um, quite possibly we actually just need to accept that we can't do stack analysis in the general case, in the universal case, um, when, it, when it comes to text embedding. <coughs> 